Today we're doing an experiment with a bypass valve configuration on a pump that will hopefully enable me to control the flow rate and pressure of this pump to whatever flow and pressure I need within 300 PSI, which is the specification of the output. The PSI rating of this pump is 1600 PSI and like 1.5 gallons per minute at that pressure, but that's just far too high for what we're doing. So today's strategy is going to deploy something called the bypass valve configuration. Never seen a pump like this in my life, though I do believe it's used in large oil furnaces or oil boilers. I guess a long story short, finding a low flow, high pressure water pump is impossible for under $1,000 that is. This setup here costs about 200 bucks which is a steal seeing as how I've broke several pumps. The main purpose of doing this test in a breadboard configuration was to see whether or not I would need needle valves. I was worried that these valves would not give us the fine tuning that I wanted in it. But as you can see, I was able to land that needle down to the single PSI. The flow rate wasn't any harder. So nothing um, worrisome or troublesome whatsoever just happened it's a little early in the morning i can't run this thing anymore i don't want to wake everybody up it's bad enough i keep them up late with noise so i'm gonna end this for today but uh this information is going to be useful to a lot of people because people have contacted me in the past about this pump issue it's very hard to find a pump that can do what we just seen for uh, for this price you can buy them for a thousand to five grand. <laughs> I think one of the coolest things about this test is that I will also be able to solve my oil pump problems I've had in the past. Building oil pumps for waste oil burners is very hard to do. See, I have this set up here and it just doesn't do what you want it to. It's a very pulsy gyration type Pump. This will probably be the same way though now that I think about it. It's hard to say. I could put uh, a water hammer resistor on there to act as a cushion. But anyway, the pulsations don't do well on waste oil burners because they translate into the fireball pulsating. Every time the, the G-rotor lobes a clump of fluid into that line, it's like a machine gun. Okay, so... That frequency is very observable in the flame, and it does things that, that do what I would consider to be unstable. It's just not as stable of a combustion, and I don't think it's as hot as it can get. So, this was a pretty huge success for me on this test. I've always, I built one of these years ago for an oil pump, and it didn't work. Um, I wasn't able to get the flow rates right and I think all it was was my valves were just too big um, I used large valves Like these here and these don't Give you very good fine-tuning and I was going for like super low flow rates so I don't know 
Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys because uh, I'm working with an individual in Texas right now by the name of Cook. And uh, this video is mostly for you, brother. I mean, this is for Carlos also. This is your pump, Carlos. We are installing this bad boy. I'm not going to charge you any extra. It's not your fault that I'm getting ripped off from China. <laughs>